Soon, with the flip of a switch, New York's camera army is gonna start taxing us all. But what most people don't know is the city has a secret plan to install 1,300 more of them just to make sure no one escapes. The New York City Department of Transportation wants to increase the number of red light cameras across the city by a lot. I know there are some people who say, oh, this is just a revenue raise. It's not about revenue. It's about keeping people alive. But some research shows that they may lead to more crashes overall, because drivers who slam on the brakes to avoid running lights may be getting into more rear-end collisions. You might not like what I'm saying, but it's a fact. The first of four meetings is one of the last steps before the MTA turns on its toll readers that they say are ready to go live in June. The MTA hopes to raise billions for transit projects like new subway subway cars and more accessible stations. My patients get daily radiation and are often too sick to use public transportation. Last I checked, you can't deliver freight via subway. Get ready for more surveillance because cameras are coming. Yes, mass surveillance is upon us and the city has a secret plan to add to it and expand it beyond what we thought was gonna happen just a few months ago. But while proponents say the plan to add traffic cameras is to protect us, critics say it's just another money grab by the city, making it a tax on the everyday working man. But what nobody's talking about is how the city is quietly releasing more of their plans for congestion pricing. And as the deadline approaches to start rolling out these cameras to the entire city, we're quickly learning just how horrible and expensive they're actually going to be, and it's going to impact everybody even if you don't have a car. And all of these cameras and surveillance programs are raising uncomfortable questions in the minds of New Yorkers. Like, are these actually going to be as great a program as our elected officials are telling us? Or is there a chance they could be used nefariously by the city? And perhaps most concerningly, will other American cities copy New York once they learn how much money this place is making off its residents? Well, to answer that, we're first going to have to look at what city officials are saying about their experience exciting new plans to add as many red light cameras to intersections like this as possible. Department of Transportation wants to increase the number of red light cameras across the city by a lot. Yeah, currently, those red light cameras are installed at 150 intersections, giving out nearly 2,000 tickets per day. So here we have our first new type of controversial camera that the city greatly wants to expand. Now, mind you, red light cameras in the city started as a pilot program affecting only a small number of intersections, and now they want them everywhere. On top of that, these stoplight cameras are controversial in different ways than the automatic tolling traffic cameras which we'll get into but once you understand that the local government here not only controls the timing of the traffic lights how long the light stays yellow before it turns red and that they get all the money from these red light cameras a very frightening picture starts to emerge plus nobody's talking about how they may not actually make streets safer but city officials really want more of these they say that traffic fatalities are up which is true and there's a lot of pedestrians in new york who very well may benefit from less drivers running red lights. There are about 14,000 signaled intersections, yet less than 1% have red light cameras. Officials are hoping, yes, to up that to roughly 1,325 or 10% of intersections. Okay, so they want to expand the total number of cameras from 1% of intersections. And not only does the city greatly want to expand the number of cameras, habitual offenders will now have their registrations automatically voided, making their cars illegal. When you look at all the data, at the number of the Reductions of the number of people who have been injured in red light intersections. It helps pedestrians, it helps cyclists. So this is not a bill meant to penalize drivers. This is a bill meant to protect everyone on our roads. So the sales pitch is less fatalities, safer streets, less accidents. In fact, no politician has a negative thing to say about these. And critics say there are elements of red light camera programs that these guys are missing. And the first of those is that they don't affect traffic the exact same way their proponents think they do. And according to Scientific American, while drivers are 67% less likely to run a red light when there's a camera, they cite studies that conclude they are not effective at lowering overall traffic accidents. Which at first to me didn't make any sense. I mean, how could the streets not be safer if people no longer want to run red lights? Well, apparently, this is because at a traffic light, you've got three colors, green, yellow, red, and the yellow light is supposed to be a neutral light that tells you to stop if it is safe 
to do so. Not something that warns you that you're about to get a ticket. And apparently a red light camera changes driver behavior so much so that other types of accidents become more common once you install them. And that's because when lights turn yellow, drivers are now more likely to jam on their brakes and try to stop to not get fined. And the study's authors say that this increases the chances of rear end collisions, while at the same time decreasing T-bone type accidents where somebody runs a red light and hits a car moving through the intersection. Which means as one type of accident goes down, another type goes up. Meanwhile, the city is making money every single time somebody runs a red, which wasn't happening before they installed the cameras. This article cites a study showing that rear end collisions increased 22% in the city of Chicago after red light cameras were rolled out everywhere. And that's because drivers are no longer making a safety-based judgment decision on how fast their vehicle's traveling and how much time they think they have to stop. No, they're now making a financial decision every time they come to a traffic light. Critics would argue that unsafe behavior at a traffic light is a financial decision. Now, Scientific American looks at the city of Houston, Texas, and they say that angle-based accidents like T-bones went up after the city removed red light cameras, but rear-end accidents went down by 18%, which could mean that red light cameras just redistribute the types of accidents that happen on the street. But the politicians, God bless them, they're insisting that this is not about money. But when a politician says something's not about money... I know there are some people who say, oh, this is just a revenue raiser. Well, first of all, it's really not because many people learn to not do what they're not supposed to do. So it's not about revenue. It's about keeping people alive. Huh. So... According to the people who want this to go through, it's not about money. But a 2001 congressional report found out that the time for yellow lights has been sharply shortened since the 70s and that inadequate yellow light times are the cause of 80% of red light related accidents. And that means there's a way to make the streets safer without red light cameras. What's also interesting is many cities that install red light cameras use a private company to operate them. In some cases, the red light camera revenue is shared with the company that operates the cameras. And some of of these companies have stipulations that require the minimum or maximum rather length a yellow light can be yellow for because they know that shorter yellow lights earn them more money. On top of that, the city's vendor for their red light cameras has already been spotted doing really shady stuff, overcharging the city for unnecessary work just to make an extra buck off taxpayers. And the general public has no way of knowing if something like that ever happens. But that raises a big question. Just how much money are these cameras anticipated to make? Currently, those red lights cameras are installed at 150 intersections giving out nearly 2,000 tickets per day under the new so currently the 150 intersections that give out tickets do it about 2,000 times a day negating the argument that as you put these into service people will start to obey red lights further but 2,000 traffic tickets a day over 150 cameras is about 13 each but that means if the city goes from 150 to 1300 cameras the total number of tickets written per day will be seven and if each of these earns $50 every time it happens, that's how much money the city is going to make every single day. But it's not about money. It's not. It's not about money. No way. Don't even think about it. That's the yearly total if you're curious. And these numbers are based on the current timing of the city's yellow lights. Again, remember, if that time changes, the city could make varying amounts of money depending on how they work the traffic patterns. I'm not suggesting that's actually going to happen, but the opportunity for foul play and unaccountability is definitely there. And it's probably worth mentioning that as a pedestrian who's not driving even if traffic accidents overall don't change because they are no longer red light related accidents that could put pedestrians at risk maybe that's an overall benefit to the program is that accidents are now only driver related either way critics are saying this is just another tax on the poor because the $50 fee is paid by everybody $50 doesn't matter much to Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg but it does matter significantly to people who work normal jobs and may make less than $50 an hour but speaking of unaffordable in just a few months the city is is going to flip the switch on its controversial congestion cameras. And critics say once they do that, all of us are going to end up paying for it, whether we have a car on the road or not. This is a crime against a New Yorker. A public hearing on the 20th floor of the MTA headquarters at 2 Broadway got so heated, this man was asked to leave. Do the right thing. The first of four. So the city is required to hold these comment sessions about these cameras and their evil plan. I mean, their good plans 
for how they're gonna help the city get a better subway. And the other reason they have these meetings is so that the lunatics who oppose a system of taxation that hits every single car on the road, no matter who owns it or how much money they make, can be exposed as the lunatics that they are. Oh my goodness, who could possibly be against such a system? But unfortunately, as we've learned and as the MTA studies reveal, every positive of congestion pricing comes with an associated negative. For example, studies show that there might be less traffic here in Manhattan, but there might be more traffic in areas just outside of the congestion zone, not to mention places like the Bronx, Brooklyn, Staten Island. The same goes for pollution. You may have cleaner air in the zone that the tolls affect, but more pollution in areas of town that don't have the tolls. And on top of that, the daily rates charged by these cameras are going to disproportionately affect low-income New Yorkers. In New York, congestion pricing is predicted to result in a 15% reduction in crashes. Cleaner air, consistent and dedicated funding for public transit. Under the plan, passenger vehicles would face a once daily $15 toll for driving below 60th Street. Okay, so $15 per cars, more for trucks, depending on how big the trucks may actually be. And this fee will affect all traffic south of 60th Street, which is going to be great for the richest neighborhoods of New York City and the city's richest, wealthiest residents. On top of that, the money earned from congestion pricing is going to a city agency that already gets $20 billion a year. Throw them a couple extra billion. Sure, they'll know what to do with it and not waste it. And that's one thing that critics are pretty alarmed about. The subway and public transit that we have is already an embarrassment. It's already disgusting. It's already unsafe and it's already unreliable. But that's not even the real problem with this plan, which could end up making all of us less safe. The union representing firefighters is calling on the MTA to exempt their FDNY members from paying the $15 congestion pricing tool. We have my jacket and my jacket has my mask. FDNY union reps also say their equipment is covered in dangerous chemicals they say is not safe to carry on public transit. Okay, so I think this is where we need to draw the line. Forcing first responders to take the train with all their equipment. Do we really want to do that? Especially firefighters with all that heavy stuff. I couldn't carry that. Look at all these empty police cars and nobody driving them around. We've already got shortages of first responders. And the fact that the city's going to tell its own employees who it already doesn't pay very well to haul all their stuff on the train. And look, usually I'm not one for advocating that somebody gets better treatment by the government because they work for the government. That seems unfair. It is unfair. But if we're not going to pay our cops and our firefighters and we've got shortages of them and now we're just going to make their lives tougher, I don't know. And the other problem with these cameras is that if you don't have a car, your life could still get more expensive because your food doesn't get an exemption from the tolls either. Adding a congestion fee to truck trips every time they enter the CBD will primarily hurt New York's small local trucking companies who cannot afford to absorb these costs. Last I checked, you can't deliver freight via subway. Under the plan, passenger vehicles. So trucks, they already pay a higher toll and most distribution facilities aren't located inside the congestion zone. So it's not like there's a Whole Foods in Manhattan and then there's a distribution center nearby where the trucks kind of travel to and from. No, it all takes place outside of the city. And these stores are getting replaced multiple times a week and critics say the truck drivers are just gonna pass this cost along to the people who receive their goods who are then gonna pass it along to consumers who end up paying more for things like vegetables and milk and what that could mean is the big trucks and cars that cause congestion don't suffer at all from these tolls and this whole thing literally could be a way to get money from residents who don't actually drive a car at all and don't actually think that the congestion pricing is their problem the MTA hopes to raise billions for transit projects like new subway cars and more accessible stations. The funds from congestion pricing will pay for more accessibility for people with disabilities, people who are tired. Now, of course, on the other side of this are the supposed promises of public transit improvements. Promises that, by the way, cannot happen under the $20 billion budget the MTA already has. And people who use public transit could greatly benefit from more accessibility, more elevators, more ramps. Right now, most of the subway terminals are stairs. You are walking, you are carrying heavy things. And that's why it kind of seems ridiculous that firefighters who have heavy gear that could potentially have carcinogens on it because they were in a fire, we're going to have to lug that stuff up and down stairs. That just seems kind of crazy because the improvements aren't going to happen the minute they turn on the cameras. It's going to take time. But even so, there's other people who are never going to be able to take the subway, and this is going to really hurt them. I am a radiation doctor. My patients get daily radiation and are often too sick 
to use public transportation. This congestion fee is essentially a cancer tax. You can really hear it in that doctor's voice. She's caring for people who need all the physical strength they can get just to make it through these tough treatments. And the idea of someone who's suffering having to either endure more costs in addition to expensive medical treatment or to be forced to struggle with New York's unreliable public transit that's not gonna change anytime soon. It just sounds awful. And that brings up a very uncomfortable question. Who are all of these cameras that are watching all of us and taxing all of us really benefiting? They benefit the city because of added revenue. They benefit the companies that operate these machines because they get some sort of fee. And the game plan for the subway is supposedly to have the MTA get this system up operational and then go take out loans, incurring more debt so that they can get a massive amount of money right now to start improving the subway, which is going to take a very long time and might actually put the MTA in a worse position later because they're gonna have to service all of the extra debt and the subway we already have is subpar with billions being spent just to maintain it and keep the few trains that we have running on a reasonable schedule so that the city just doesn't shut down. Personally, I don't care if we have a fancy new subway. I just want trains to show up quickly, on time, with no delays, no signal malfunctions, and I would like to see police in the train keeping people safe. That shouldn't cost billions of dollars, and it shouldn't require new taxes to accomplish something like that and get a basic bare bones system like that. That's something that a lot of commuters would probably appreciate, but what do you think the city should do? Do you think these cameras are the answer? Do you agree with red light cameras? Do you agree with traffic cameras? Let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.